Today, you've chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially dangerous message. Welcome to our church. Came here. All right, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> this is going to be fun. You all are going to be around a bunch of people that haven't slept all weekend, so it's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be a riot. Hey, I'm Pastor Andy. You're at What's New Worship. We're glad that you're here, and uh, we're going to have a good time today. And, and uh, but what we're definitely going to do is we're going to put our focus and concentration on worshiping the Lord here at the beginning and then hearing what he has to say to us that changes us. Uh, you should not walk out of here or even walk in here without wanting something different. And that, So that's the purpose of what we do here at What's New Worship. There are some new faces, and... And uh, the donuts just got here, so everybody's still hanging out out there. So, uh, but there are some new faces. So when you get an opportunity, get around and meet somebody and make sure you welcome them. Shake their hand, find out something about them, and make sure every single person gets greeted. And not only greeted, but welcomed at here, here today at church. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going we're gonna to step into worship. And uh, that's not just singing songs, uh, but uh, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Let's, let's pray. And invite our, our awesome God to, uh, to be here, to uh, look, at, look past our, our outward appearance, and look at our hearts. Um, that's what we desire. So let's pray, and then we're going to do this worship thing, and we're going to try to do it right. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this past week. Wow, what an awesome, awesome week we had, Lord, all the things that were going on. The, the hundreds of teenagers we got to work with and just things that were going on, Lord. We just praise you for all that. Thank you for the air that we breathe, God. Thank you for the, the roof over our heads, the food that we get uh, to have, Lord. Thank you for taking care of us. And, and Lord, I pray today that we would uh, offer back an attitude of gratitude and just praise you for who you are and what you've done for us. Lord, we ask your blessing on the worship time, Lord, that you would uh, be glorified and lifted up. Lord, we ask your blessing on the fellowship time that our folks would feel welcomed and, Lord, that we can get around and maybe pray for some folks and listen to some struggles and battles that are going on. And then when the word is preached, God, that it come in and it change our heart. Take me completely out of it, God, and you speak to your people the way that you want to speak to them. And then, uh, God, we, we're going to praise you. We're going to have a good time, and we're just going to honor you today because you are worthy of our praise. You are an awesome, awesome God. We, we ask all these uh, things in your precious and holy name. So be it. Now, Sounds good. All right. Um, if you guys are following anything on Facebook this past weekend, we absolutely blew youth ministry out of the park. I mean, it was phenomenal. On Friday night at 7 o'clock in here, if you would have walked in, there was probably 300 people in here just signing their kids up for the, the uh, all-nighter. We had 100, about 150 kids show up for the all-nighter, like 27 chaperones and then Chris's family, so another 30 kids <laughs> under the age of seven or something like that. So it, it was phenomenal, and we, uh, we got to share Jesus with them, and um, man, we gave an invitation, and there were kids looking up everywhere that they made a decision for Christ, which was really awesome, and then we, we uh, yeah, that's something to clap for, for sure. Uh, then we, uh, we, we also asked if they were ready to re recommit, and the, the whole theme behind it was that uh, uh, in, we, we, we played this game called dodgeball when I worked at the Sportsplex, and uh, they had this guy on the other team, and, and, and we called him Ivan Drago. He was about 6'5", blonde, muscle-like freak, and uh, when we would play them, we would try to get him out first. And... Uh, Every ball that we would throw would go at him, and so we started talking about what, that, how, how the devil aims at our teenagers because the teenagers are who he's afraid of. Yep. So uh, it was an awesome thing. It had a bunch of kids recommit to, to fighting the, with the devil and overcoming and winning, and it was what, a, what an awesome weekend. And um, So if you see some people that look like their eyes are all red and uh, you know we, we're barely standing up, that's what we've been doing. We're not that crazy of a church on Saturday night, so... <laughs> But uh, God's been good to us, and uh, um, All right. you're, you're going to have to bear with me. Like I said, going on lack of sleep. So if some of this stuff doesn't even make sense, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, my message this morning, and, and I put the reference there so you can look it up, but we're going to just kind of hang out in these few verses. But let's start with this. I, I, I want to do this. To whom much is given, much is 
Much is required. Try it again. To whom much is given, you're going to get something from God today that he is going to ask you, not ask you, he requires you to do something with. Does that make sense? We're not just going to sit in here and become a bunch of spiritually fat Christians. You hear what I'm saying? A lot of times we'll just come in and eat, 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 eat from what the pastor says, eat from the word of God, eat from the worship, eat, 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 but you never do anything. Woo. That's the whole point of what we're eating for. It should be fuel to go. So anyway, I think my miracle's broken. Have you ever felt like that? You ever felt like, um, man, I didn't, I didn't get it the way everyone else got a miracle? Like this, um, this whole Christianity thing, <laughs> it, it, it didn't turn out like the advertisement. You know what I'm talking about? I, I mean, <laughs> I hope I, I know I did this the last time, and I apologize. But that whopper you see on TV is not the whopper you get. No. <laughs> I'm angry. Now this is preaching here. Now we have this we have this idea. As a matter of fact, the world has this idea. Maybe you come to church this morning with this idea and you've kind of based your faith and your Christianity on how God answers everybody else's prayers. And, and some of you are literally sitting in church this morning going, oh, man, I, I must be way off because um, I, I, I think my miracle got broken somehow. And a lot of that is because we want things to happen right now, too, right? Like, that's our idea of Christianity. Our idea of, of prayer is the McDonald's drive through I'll, I'll take a double-sized portion of this, and I'll have one of those, and give me a, you know, large shake. That's, that's kind of how we talk to God. And then we expect to ride around the corner and everything to be taken care of. And, and, and what frustrates us is that that happens for some people, doesn't it? We go, man... What did he do that God answered his prayer in like 30 seconds? Good illustration. The other night uh, at the, at the drive-in, at the, drive the all-nighter, uh, Faith, Faith um, Morrison drops her Invisalign mouth protector, whatever those things are, and she drops it right before they turn the lights out at the park. And... Uh, Tim said, Tim and Denise are out there looking with their, their phones, and, and they're out there for a couple hours looking for this thing in the dark, and um, they can't find it. And, and then uh, the next morning, they, they're picking up Faith from Apple Land at 7.30 in the morning. They take Faith back out to uh, Winchester Park to look for it. And Faith's like, are you serious? Do we really have to go out there? So Faith is praying the whole time, God, we've got to find this. She gets out of the car, walks out, picks it up off the ground, walks back to the car. <laughs> You know Tim and Denise are going, why didn't our prayers work? <laughs> right? I mean, we have those moments where we look around and we see other people's prayers happening and we see these things happening and, and, and it confuses us. This, man, what, what's going on with this God? And, and I'm going to kind of give you a couple of different illustrations here. Go on to the next one for me. I want to show you something that makes me pull, want to pull my hair out. Have you ever heard somebody say something similar to this? I don't have to go to church to be a good person. Have you heard that? I, 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 I get it. I, I, I completely get it. And you don't have to be. I get it. But you don't, you don't have to go to the hospital to get better either. But your chances are better. Does that make sense? Sometimes you've got to get out of some places and not be at some places and put yourself at some places and opportunities so that things, you, you're, you're, you put yourself around people, that, and we're going to get into all this, you, you put yourself around some people that are going to lift you up and, and show you some things, we're going to get into this, but this, this kind of irritates me. Um, you can take your car, you don't have to get your car, you can take your car to the auto shop and, and, and leave it there, that doesn't mean it's going to get fixed. Just, 
You know what I'm saying? Like there's all these things. You, you've got to do what you've got to do to make the opportunities better. So if you're here today, man, we are, we are glad you're here. And, and it, this, is gonna, this is all going to make sense. But sometimes, sometimes if you want to get better, you've got to put yourself in a different place. Does that make sense? Sometimes you're going to have to walk away from some things, and we're going to get right into this because this is a pretty neat story. Uh, um, we were just talking about this. Go on to the next one. Jesus did, did it the wrong way. Now, if you, read the, if you read through the scriptures, I don't know if he's just showing off. I, I, God's given me a couple of different perspectives on this. I think sometimes like Jesus was just doing some really cool things, like, like the one lady in Acts that just reaches over. I, I, no, that's not Acts, but it was Mark. She reaches over and she touches his robe. She touches his robe and, and she's healed. Like, okay. And then sometimes he, 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 he's, he's not even there. He says, just go home. The kid's better. Right? I mean, like, this isn't, he's just awesome like this. And, and so he does all these different kinds of things. And what we were just talking about, Jesus did it the wrong way. And sometimes we think, man, uh, what I'm going through, I prayed for some stuff and it got worse. Well, I, I, go, I go to the story of Joseph and I, I go right to that every time where Joseph's, Joseph was told, you're going to be a leader. You're going to be a ruler. And then Joseph's brothers throw him in a hole and he, he gets sold into slavery. Like, God? Are you kidding? I, I must have completely misunderstood this. Like, this is not, my miracle must be broken. Right? And, and some of us are in the middle of that where we're going, this is not what I signed up for. This is not who I thought God was. And, 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 and then there's some of you that have been through those situ situations, and, and you can be able to tell other people, Man, even in the middle of that mess, God was doing some really awesome things. So Jesus did it the wrong way, and that leads us to our first verse today. It's Mark 8, 22 and 23. You can pull it up. Yep. It says, they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. <laughs> okay, Jesus, I get it. <laughs> when he had spit on the man's eyes... And put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? What? Does that not shock anybody? Like we have this like, you know, the, the pictures we see, the halo, the white robe, the beard. And, and here's Jesus, you know. <laughs> Come here. This is going to work, I promise. <laughs> what? It says that he spit on him. Spit on the man's eyes, and my perspective on this, Christians, we've got to be careful on this. I, one, one of the reasons why I think he did these, and, and, and if you look through the scriptures, he did, he did his miracles differently every time. Because you know what happens when, when, um, when we think that the miracles should happen the same way every time? We get very judgmental of people. Somebody says a prayer at a, at a service and then we see them uh, back out and, and they're fighting a habit. And we know they're fighting it. We know they, they don't want to be involved in it. Maybe we see them uh, fighting a habit and, 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 quickly, and quick, quickly in our cultural Christianity, the devil sneaks in and he says, um, that person, they just lied. That was fake. Well, what if God just heals people differently? What if, he, what if he just puts us on a path and it, some, for some of us, he allows us to keep struggling? Man, I, I keep thinking of the Apostle Paul. Man, this is like the, the greatest Christian to ever live. And, 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 and God allows him to have this thorn in his side that he can't get over. You would think, you, listen to me, don't feel so bad. The greatest Christian in the world prays and asks God over and over again to take this thorn from his side and God doesn't do it. You know why? He wants Paul to be reminded that he still desperately needs him. Does that, does that make sense? Well, what, if, what if God doesn't heal us all the same way? What if everything doesn't turn out perfectly?
perfect right away. And, and, and we've got to be careful, Christians, because what we'll do is somebody will walk into our church and they literally come forward and they do. They give their heart to Jesus Christ. They, and, and he says, you know what, I'm going to mold this one a little bit different. I'm going, to, I'm going to create this one a little bit different. I'm going to form him a little. I'm going to let him go through these battles. I want to see, now I want to see him overcome this challenge so that he can go back and tell folks how he overcame. And, 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 and if, we're not, if we're not careful, we'll, we'll get very judgmental and we'll see somebody still doing the same old stuff and we'll go, man, they must have been a phony. They must have been a fake. Now, here's the, here's the reality, especially here at our church. Jesus loves you the way that you are, for sure. But he also loves you enough not to leave you that way. So the scripture does say that the old things pass away. It doesn't say that it all dies at one time. It says that it all passes away. And, there, and you're, if you think that you turned perfect the day that you got saved, I want you to stand up. <laughs> we, we can't do that. Now, here's the cool part. We are righteous the very moment we got saved. And he looks beyond that. He looks past that. And he sees his righteousness. But if you think you got perfect, you're wrong. As a matter of fact, there's probably some stuff that's going on in your life that if we were able to start putting light bulbs over your head on what you've done this week, we'd get very embarrassed, wouldn't we? So we got to be careful. Jesus didn't heal the same way. He heals people differently all the time. And what an awesome picture that we got. But, uh, you know, he spits on this man's eyes and then he heals him. And then I go on to the next one. Jesus took me away from my comfort zone. Whoa. If you've become a believer this, and this hasn't happened, it's going to. <laughs> You're going to get put in some awkward situations. and, and here, Watch this. This is really neat. Go on to the Bible verse that we have there, Mark 8. We're right back to the same verse. Look what it says. He took the blind man by the hand, and he led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? Then Jesus sent him home saying, Don't even go into the village. Now, there was, why would Jesus do this? Sometimes God takes us outside of our comfort zones. God takes us outside of where we feel like we've got everything together. And he, he pulls us outside the city because then there's not all those distractions. And it's just you and him time. Does that make sense? Sometimes, listen, sometimes he'll take you away from your finances or take your finances away from you. So that you're a little uncomfortable and then you just get to have you and Jesus time. Does that make sense? Sometimes he takes uh, some relationships away, right? He, he pulls you away from all these things. He pulls you out and he says, you know what? I'm going to let you be out in the middle, away from your comfort zone. I want to pull you away from your comfort zone so it's just me and you. It, you're just hearing from me. You're desperate to hear from me. And nobody else is around you to influence what's going on. Sometimes he lets your addiction or your battle pull you away from life, your comfort zone, where you feel like you've got nothing, nobody loves you, nobody can help you, and he does that so that you start looking for somebody and, and it's just you and him. Is this making sense? Man, it sure did to me. Sometimes God takes us outside the city. Sometimes God takes us out of our comfort zone. Sometimes God lets our marriage get a little rocky. Sometimes God allows this addiction to beat us up. Sometimes he, lets us, he takes us out. Sometimes he takes us out of a job. He pulls us out of it and he says, you know what, I just want you to, I want you to see me. Watch this. Matthew eleven twenty one. 21. Bethsaida had some problems. Jesus had some issues with Bethsaida. Look what it says. It says, Woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. He's saying some people just don't get it. We can't be a church where this would turn into this. If we could replace the words, Woe to you, what's new worship, 
for the miracles that were performed in you, the people would have repented. Think about that. Listen, folks, sometimes we're, we're around miracles. I, I've seen miracles. You've seen miracles. We've, seen, we've heard, some, we've heard and, and seen some amazing things. And it says that Bethsaida, they, they just kind of ignored that. They accept the blessing, kept living the same old way they wanted to. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. God's good. There's no reason to repent. Uh, he, apparently, he just loves us, and you know, everything's good, fine and dandy. And, and uh, you know, no, we'll just keep living the way we want, just keep ex- accepting the miracles and keep expecting the miracles. And if you keep, listen, watch, check this out. If you keep living the way you want and keep expecting miracles, you're going to get disappointed and start getting angry with God. Miracles are blessings, not your right. Wow. And that comes from the repentance. What is repentance? That's mean, that means at some point you, you have this moment where you turn away from what you're into and you turn to God. Whatever you're battling, and you turn to that. And so that, that's what's going with Bethsaida. And so he, Jesus said, I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull you out of this this group of knotheads that you're hanging out with, because some of us get in a group, it, things are rough. You know, we get around people that put are down in Christianity or maybe they're just down in everything all the time. And so Jesus says, hey, I'm going to pull you outside of the city and go on to the next one. Look what happens. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. We, we've got to recognize sometimes who we're hanging out with can cause problems. Whoa. Sometimes the people that we are around can corrupt us. <laughs> it, this this will be tough. When you get around people that are speaking negative, you need to get away. Get around people that are speaking life, speaking, speaking into people. Speaking, you know, I, 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 every time I counsel somebody, I say, you know what you need to do? You need to quit. It's always the news. I hate the news. I absolutely hate the news. But, but get away from situations where things are rough all the time. Get away from the people that are always down and stuff. Get away from the gossip. Go, go around where somebody's talking about miracles. You, oh, man, Find somebody that lifts you up. Find somebody that talks about Jesus all the time. And, and uh, uh, there's, a, there's a story about Paul being chained to the jailers. And uh, you all remember that story? He's chained to the jailers. And he says, man, I get the opportunity. These, these guys think that uh, uh, they're chained. I'm chained to them, but they're, they're chained to me. <laughs> right? That's the idea. Right? Like now, hey, you guys, you ain't going nowhere. I'm going to just sit here and praise the Lord. I'm just going to sit here and share Jesus with you. You ain't going anywhere. You can't go anywhere. And there's people like that. Man, I, got, I had a friend named Joe Hepler. And, man, uh, every, time, every time I was around Joe, Joe was always sharing Jesus, always talking about the Lord. And, and, and that story popped into my mind because Joe, Joe had a, a nurse. He was bleeding from his arm where they put something in, some type of IV, and they couldn't get it to stop. So the nurse had to stand there with her thumb putting pressure on it, and he said, you can't go anywhere. Let me tell you something. <laughs> so uh, we, put yourself around those kind of people. You know some people like that? You know some people that when you're around them, for some reason they're speaking life and they're speaking good things, and they're, it seems like they're doing good things. Man, there's a bunch of you here at the... I'm so proud of our church. Gosh, people out doing stuff all the time, um, helping others and, and taking care of folks and then people volunteering and helping. I mean, just get around some people that are doing good. Get around some people that are speaking life because uh, get, pull yourself out of that system. Pull yourself out of those groups so that God can uh, just speak life into you. Go on to the next one. Look, and I'm just talking about your, the people that were around. Look. Proverbs 13, 20, whoever walks with wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. It's okay. Listen, if God has pulled you away from some people, maybe it's because he wants you to hang out with some wiser people. Maybe he's trying to build some character in you. Maybe maybe the, the relationship you were fighting so hard to keep isn't the right relationship. 
You know? Maybe, maybe God wants to build this relationship first and that one secondary. Does that make sense? So, so that's, that's what we're looking at here. It, it, reasons why we would be pulled away out, outside of a group. Go on to the next one. Oh, man, this is awesome. Jesus uses me to help others see. What? Watch this. And this happens a couple times in Scripture. Mark 8, 22. It says, they came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. There's another story where, they, you remember the story where they lower the sick man down through the roof? And, and, and Jesus looks at, the, at those men and he says, wow, because of your faith. Because of your faith, I'm going to do something here today. Listen, parents, especially this is what popped in my mind. And, I mean, this can be for your friends or whoever. But listen, parents, get them to Jesus. They might be running. They might be fighting. They might be hating everything that you're doing. But your faith, whoa. Your faith, your faith, your per perseverance, your uh, c continuing to seek out God, your struggle, your challenge, you, you just get them, you put them in the door, you, you get them there, you do what you can. It, you know, it, it's the, you can't lead a horse to water, or you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. It's the same scenario. Parents, listen, because of your faith, God can do some things. Friends of people, maybe you're a, a wife that's here and your husband's not, or vice versa. Your faith can, your faith can help bring somebody else closer to God. Man, that's a, that's a good thought. Watch this. Jesus gave me vision. Go on to the next one. Jesus gave me vision so I could see the vision. Did it go up? Jesus gave me vision so I could see the vision. So the story, watch how the story goes. Mark 8, 24, he looked up. You can go on to the next one. He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. So, so wait a minute. So here this guy is, um, they get him to Jesus, they want him to get healed, and Jesus, first of all, spits on his hands, or spits on his eyes, and then um, tells the guys to open his eyes, Jesus knows what's going to happen. So he opens his eyes, and he can't see very well, he can see, but not very well. This guy probably has this, this thought like, wow, um, uh, okay, good one. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, halfway got it done, Jesus, you know, good job, I guess. He starts having this, no, you know, here's what I think happened. It doesn't say that this man had any faith, Right? Matter of fact, if you go, if you go to the, uh, if you go to the next one, uh, Matthew thirteen fifty eight, it says he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Sometimes uh, Jesus is trying to build our faith. If we'll have short, stronger faith, if we'll have faith that we can recognize who He is, He He builds our faith. So here, maybe, maybe the guy, maybe it's, it doesn't say that he had faith. Remember what it said? It says that some people brought a guy to Jesus, and they brought him. He, he might have been fighting and kicking and screaming. It says that he brought, they brought this man. He had no desire. It, sh it doesn't show that he had any desire to be healed. It doesn't show that they had any desire to know who Jesus Christ was. So he, he shows up, and, and, and so Jesus has a desire for him to know, but he doesn't. He wants him to have faith, so he just shows him Kind of a miracle. And Jesus didn't fail here. And what, what I think happens, and this is what I think uh, goes on even in, in our church, is somebody may have talked you into showing up at church, and somebody may, you might have gotten here to church today, and you're going, uh, man, my miracle's broken. I, I don't know what's going on. And you're kind of looking around, and, and you're looking around at everybody else's life, and you're going, man, this is a little blurry to me. I don't really get this whole thing. I don't get it. And then we'll put some testimonies up here in front of you. Somebody like a TJ in his testimony, or, or Dave Dixon is a former Satanist, and he shares his testimony. Or we bring Star in, who was a former prostitute and drug dealer, and we bring them in, and we put them in front of you, and you get to see, uh, you get to see. So you, now all of a sudden it's like there's some hope. Seeing causes a little bit more faith, right? 
The reason why we do the testimonies and the things like that is I didn't, I didn't grow up with, um, I grew up in church. My, my biggest sin is learning how to fake Christianity. And that's terrible. Paul called that, the, he called himself the worst of sinners because that's what he did. I'm the worst of sinners. I, I faked Christianity. I thought I was doing God's work and I wasn't. So I don't have the same story as some of you guys. I, I can't, I can't re really relate to a drug addict or somebody that's battling alcoholism. So you come in and you, you're hearing me and you go, man, that's not, I, I don't, you know, this pastor, he's got, this is half a miracle to me. But we put somebody up here that's been through it. And then you kind of, you can kind of see it. You see how, you hear how somebody's been healed and how they're, let me share this. It doesn't matter how embarrassing or degrading you think your testimony is. God gave it to you so you could help somebody else. Oh, wow. 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 If you've, if you've been freed of something, don't you go to the other guy that's in the same bondage and say, hey, I know how to get out? Wow. Wow. Even if it was embarrassing, even if it was a drug addiction, even if it was adultery, even if it was pornography or whatever it was, don't you, doesn't it make sense? Hey, I, I've been freed from this. I can help you. And a lot of us, we won't share our testimony. We won't tell anybody what we dealt with because we're embarrassed about it. And then we'll watch somebody walking right by in the same captivity. And we just say, man, I hope you find Jesus. Instead of, I can show you Jesus. <laughs> That makes sense. Go on to the uh, go on to the next one. Mark nine twenty two. Look what it says. It says Jesus uh, turned and saw her and said, "Take heart, daughter." He said, "Your faith has healed you." And the woman was healed at that moment. Oh man, this is kind of contradictory to what we were talking about earlier. She was healed right away. Her faith was right away. Your faith has healed you. Uh, in in ten, Mark. Mark 10, 52, go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Luke 17, 19, he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. And so all these other miracles that we see are um, the faith has caused this immediate healing. But not this time. And, and that's why I'm kind of confused. I think maybe he didn't have faith. Maybe this guy didn't have any faith, and so God gave him, God is so passionate for this man, he allowed him to see a little bit, and when, right, like if you've never seen before, and then all of a sudden you could see a little, then don't you kind of go, I think maybe this guy can take care of the whole deal. Does that make sense? Like, Jesus gives him a, a glimpse into the church, basically. He says, hey, you, you, look, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you see some miracles happening going on around you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you show up at the church one Sunday where there's some people sharing testimonies. I'm going to let you show up around some people where you're going to hear about their miracles. And, see, and then you're going to see, you're not going to understand it all. You're going to think it's a little blurry, but you're gonna, I want you to see it. And then you're going to go, you, I believe this guy had this moment where he went, he could really do this. And then I think that's when the second touch came. Go ahead and, and uh, pull up the next, the next verse for me. Mark 8, 25. Look at what it says. Once more, Jesus puts his hands on the man's eyes, and then his eyes were open. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Maybe you're here today, and you've been kind of looking at this whole Christianity thing, and you're not sure. Maybe God's put you in some situations where you've seen some miracles. You've been around some people that have got, overcome. And we were talking even at the, at the all-nighter about Tim and Denise that were uh, drug addicts and how God freed them. We were talking about Dave being a Satanist and into drugs and God healed him. Uh, there's others in here that have been through drug addiction and God's pulled you out. And, and, and there's people in here There's people in here that have been through pornography addictions and God's uh, freedom of that. And, 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 and so maybe you're here today. Maybe you're here today and you're, you're looking for a miracle and, and you're going to meet some of those folks and they're they're going to share with you how they've been freed and that's got kind of that first touch that first touch is that God loved you so much that he put you in a position where you could see it a little bit and he wants you to see he wants you to gain hope and he, he's giving you that hope because he wants you to recognize and have that faith grow so much that there is hope for you 
And then he wants to give you that second touch, that touch that heals you instantly. And what a, what a cool story. Go on to 2 Peter 3.18. I was talking about this. I don't want to be a fat Christian. I'm just a fat human, but fat, the fat Christian, but grow. Look what it says. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. And I started thinking, man, there was a guy that, um, uh, if you could kind of picture this, there was a guy named Evan Humbert that um, I went to his funeral. Evan was a, a teacher over at Lord Fairfax Community College. And this, this, this stands out to me greatly because this is what, this is what uh, Pastor Kerry over at uh, Fellowship Bible Church said. It says, it says that, that uh, Evan was reaching up. Evan was, uh, Evan was always looking to get better. Evan was trying to better himself. So if you can kind of picture Evan down here at the bottom and he's reaching. He, he had accountability partners and people that were a little bit stronger than him in church. And, and it says that he said that Evan was always reaching up asking somebody to help him show me how to get to the next step and so Evan would do that and, and then please show me how to get to the next step he said well here's the cool part about Evan Evan also recognized that there were people that were coming behind him and he said what we need to do as Christians is sometimes while we're grabbing for the guy that's pulling us we need to turn around and grab somebody else and help somebody else get up the step move forward We can't just get spiritually fat. I, a picture of sponge, and I did this one day at church, and we just held a cup. I had a pitcher and, and held a cup over a sponge, and, and you can dump water in that sponge, and it'll suck it up. It'll soak it up. But eventually, right. eventually, church, something should pour out of you. This is not a country club. This is not a place just to make you feel better. This is not a place just to make you feel happy. This is a place where you can fill up so that you can go help somebody else. That's the purpose. We, we did that message and it popped back into my mind, so I'm just going to say it. Instead of uh, YOLO, you only live once, it's YOFO, you only live for others. If you can figure that out, that every, look, if you only live once, and if, if, if this whole world was just about you, it would make sense that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you believe, and then you should be transported straight out of here. I'm gone. This was all about me. But it's not. He lets you stay here. He lets you go through some battles and trials and tribulations, even as a Christian, so that you can turn around and help somebody else to, to get there. You are needed in the kingdom. God chose you, gave you gifts, talents, abilities. He wants you. He want, even if it's just praying, maybe you can't get out. Maybe you don't think you can talk. Maybe you can write letters. There's some folks in, in, in jail from our church. There's, uh, what? There's folks in jail from our church that you can be speaking life into. It doesn't have to be just you being fed, you being lifted up, you being picked up and helped all the time. You're called to love God and love people. Man, watch this. The story ends up really cool. Go on to the next one. It says, wait, wait. Jesus went where? We're going to get to that. I want you to see this video. We got the video ready, Chris? Or Skippy? Which one do we want? It's the, the kind of Iron Man one. Is it ready? Come for me, Mr. President. Have no fear. I'll get you out of here one second. What? Are you a Cowboys fan? Yeah. I I wasn't I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> Is that a problem? No, 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 no problem. No problem. No, no problem. I just I got to uh I got a candle burning back at the house. What? I gotta go put it out. You understand? Ironhead? 
Swell cell. Are you swell cell? Yeah. Wow, you guys charge me three hundred dollars for an early cancellation fee. Uh -oh. Your service is dreadful. Okay. Why do you think I can't? There is a jet circling back around. And your around. customer service people were the rudest, most hard-headed. Mr. Ironhead, once the fighter jets stop shooting missiles at us, we'd be happy to go over your cell bill with you. Does that sound familiar at all? Anything? Registering? Anyway, have fun with all the shooting in the planes and uh, everything else, okay? We'll see you. Okay. We'll get you unlimited talk and text. He has a flying suit. I'm pretty sure it texts. It's just when you were screaming from before, you sounded more... blonde. So you're not gonna rescue me? I just really like blondes. I can color it. I'm listening. Isn't that what we do? Aren't we kind of selective? Listen to what I'm saying here. Aren't, aren't we kind of selective on who we help? Don't we tend to kind of help the people that maybe look like us or maybe have the same hobbies as us? It's Isn't it a little bit tougher to See the person that looks a little rough around the edges? Oh, you're not worthy. And Jesus said, whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done for me. Don't we get a little selective on who we share the gospel with and who we... Who we We're looking for nice people. Maybe this person will be receptive. Man, and maybe it's the guy... Maybe it's the guy that's angry. Maybe it's the guy that's put a mask up or a wall up that's fighting and, and tells you he hates God and, and uh, he hates religion and he, he hates everything about it. And, and what if you showed him love? What if he was just waiting for somebody real? And, and, and so here we are. It says, wait, 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 wait. Bethsaida is so bad. Wait. Jesus is saying Bethsaida so bad. Woe to Bethsaida. This place is not a good place. And, and yet, wait, this, this, this gets really confusing. Look, go on to the next from Mark 8.22. Back to that verse. It says that Jesus came to Bethsaida. You know why? Because he did not come for the healthy he came for the sick. If Bethsaida was the bad place, if Bethsaida was the dark place, and, and by the way, Angie, uh, Angie and Chris are, are going to do, do the Salem Witch, and they're doing a ministry there, and, and, and it's a dark place. That's where they're supposed to go. We're supposed to take light in the darkness. When I got hired at the Sportsplex back, uh, I guess, 12 years ago now when it first opened, I walked into the manager and, and turned in my resume and shared what, what sports activities and stuff I'd been involved with. And, and, and he's a hockey player. The owner is a hockey player. And, and he said, why would you want to hang out with all these hoodlum hockey players and, and all the stuff that's going to be going on at my facility? And, and it was one of those moments, I, I take no credit at all. It was just like a God thing right back into me. And I said, well, light works most effectively in dark places. And he went, and I went. (laughs) 
But we get pretty selective. And Jesus said, you know what, I, I don't want you hanging out there. We're not going there to have fun. It's not, I'm going to pull you outside the city so I can, can, can speak to you face to face. But we, we can't forget about Bethsaida. That, that's where Jesus went. He went back to Bethsaida, and, and, and that's where he was. And, and he's reaching people there. And, and, and so my, my last slide is this, and we're, we're just about done. Go on to the next slide. We do not enter the world to hang out. We enter the world to help out. I, um, I, I share this a, a lot. Um, it kind of frustrated some people. I, I'm not a big, um, I, I, let me be careful how I say this. I'm not a big like textbook discipleship. You go through these steps, these eight weeks or 12 weeks. I'm not that guy. I, I want to I tell you my idea of discipleship. And, and if I'm way off, then, you know, somebody come speak with me and let's talk about it. But here's my idea. Of, this is my idea. This is the Andy Combs opinion of discipleship. So if I'm a firefighter and I run into a house that's full of people and the house is on fire, I don't grab one guy, take him outside and say, hey, we're going to get you some new pants. We're going to clean you up, spray you down, you know, help you get a new suit and you know we're going to teach you all the things that firefighters do and then uh and then i'll go back uh, I, i'm going to leave you here with these guys i'm going to go back in and and pull people out of the fire that that seems foolish to me doesn't it you, you know what i'm going to do if i'm a firefighter this is my, this is the andy combs discipleship hey i've got some stuff that you need you know where the people are that are in trouble can you go with me Does that make sense? If you need more help, we'll definitely get you where you can, you can be of more help and you can get more help. But if you're ready to go, if, if I can get you some oxygen, you know, you know right now where everybody's struggling. You know the doors that I need to get through. You, need, you know where the people are that are in trouble. And I can get to them faster if you'll just jump on board with me, grab some oxygen, get this life into you, and we'll go looking for people. Amen. That's my idea of discipleship. We're not hanging out with certain folks. We're helping out for certain folks. I, uh, I got a friend that uh, I pray for all the time. I mean, remember we did those life those lifesaver things back a couple months ago. And I got a friend that that's that's my lifesaver. If he, if I can, I can't I can't wait for the day that I I see him give his heart over to Jesus and and um, he um, he called me right when we first started doing what's new. He called me and he said, "Hey, I'd like you to come out and watch." Uh, an NBA game with me at a bar. That religion inside of me said, no way in the world. The religion inside of me said, people will think that you're drinking, people will drive by. We have so many terrible excuses. People are going to see your truck in front of that bar and they're going to assume that the pastor's drinking and all the, I mean, all the, all, all these things about me started coming into my head. And my wife said, don't you want to reach him? I said, yeah, I want to reach him. She goes, Man, who cares? So I went, I went down. It's actually down here at the end. It was Tootie's. They changed it now. I went down near the end, and I saw the bunch. <laughs> I made a bunch of basketball guys nervous. Let's just say that. Some of them were like, uh-oh, what's going on here? 
Are you okay? Some of them were hiding stuff behind their back. Hey, Pastor! Some of them were a little too happy to see me. <laughs> but I, uh, I sat and watched a game with him. And then um, the following Sunday he came to church. And I'm still praying for him. I mean, I, I want to see his life change for sure. There's, a, there's an old quote that it's, it goes something like this. Live your life in such a way that when someone tells a lie about you, no one would believe it anyway. See, Andy got caught up on Andy. Andy got caught up on his reputation. Who, even Look. Even if you guys saw my truck at the bar and you all threw me out of the church, he's worth it. That guy's soul was worth it. You know, who cares about my reputation? If, I'm, if I know what I'm doing, if I'm trying to pull people out of the fire, we get too worried about everybody around us. That was, Listen, folks, maybe, maybe you've been pulled out of Bethsaida. Maybe... Maybe God's allowed you to go through some stuff and you're outside so that you and him can have this direct conversation. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. Man, recognize it for that. Recognize that your challenge, your struggle, your hurt right now may have been God pulling you away from some stuff so that he could speak to you directly and help you. But there's also this other side. Some of you, it's time to go back to Bethsaida. It's time to go help people that are in the same bondage that you were in. It's time to go show them how to get free. That's the challenge today. W would you stand with me? We're going to pray and we'll be done. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I'm going to ask you the most important question that's ever been asked in eternity, and not because I'm saying it, because it's the only thing that matters. What if all this Jesus stuff is real? Do you know him? And I mean, don't, I, I, I don't mean I just know some things about church and all the Christian things to do. There's, there's something about this Jesus that I know. I know him personally. So here's the most important question ever asked. Would you like to know him? Because he wants to know you. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, you say, Pastor... I'm not really sure I know him, or I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure I don't know him. Either way, but I'd like to. If that's you this morning, would you just look up at me? Amen. Amen. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but those you just looked up at me, here it is. Watch this. I, I, this has become my favorite way of illustrating this. You're drowning. Somehow you can't catch your breath. Somehow you can't keep your head above water. Somehow it seems like waves keep crashing over, hitting you in the face. Every time Every time it seems like you, you get where you can breathe, another wave crashes over top of your head, and you're thinking, you know, I can't keep doing this. I just can't keep doing this. Something, something's got to happen. So, is there anything out there? Is there anything in this universe, anything in this world that can save me? And then all of a sudden... There's a hand that reaches out and you look up and you see that it really is. You recognize that there he is. It's not just a figment of somebody's imagination. It's not just uh, some kind of a uh, myth that was going on. You recognize that there really is a Jesus Christ and that he wants to save you. He's got his hand out ready to pull you out of it. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, save me. I believe. If you just prayed something like that, you guys that looked up at me, would you just nod your head? You pray something like that? Amen. Did you pray something like that? Amen. Don't let me, did you pray something like that? Amen. You pray something like that? Hmm. Man. Hey, church, I'm about to tell you something really awesome. We just got some new brothers in Christ this morning. Amen? Amen? 
man. He is a good, good God. And you guys, you, let's talk. Let's talk, okay? Get me your information. Let's talk so we can help you get on. With it. I don't want to just leave you there. We, we want to show you how awesome this God can be and, and how mighty he is. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, church folks, Are you ready to go back to Bethsaida? Are you ready to go back to that group of people and start sharing your testimony? They don't know how good God is because maybe you never told them. They don't know how God freed you of your addiction or your struggle, your, your pressure, your marriage, your finances. They, they might not know any of that. Maybe you're going to run into somebody. As a matter of fact, you'd say, God, I want you to show me who I should talk to this week because I want to tell them how I got free. If that's your prayer today and you say, Pastor, I'm ready to go back to Bethsaida and help pull some people out of the fire. If that's you this morning, would you just look up, look up at me? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. We're going to go out here and make an impact in this community because of this, these few words. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. It's the power of God unto salvation. Let's pray and we're going to dismiss and we're going to go out to the battleground. Right when you walk out the door, you walk into a mission field. And God's going to test what we said today. To whom much is given? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for those, uh, that first touch. God, whether it was you put us into a church or a Christian situation or maybe a Christian family or around some people at work that live for you or maybe a neighbor that lived out what he was supposed to live out. God, thank you for that first miracle that kind of got us looking. It still wasn't clear, but it got us looking and showed us that there was hope. But then, Lord, thank you for that second touch, that one that healed us, that changed us. God, I thank you for the men this morning that gave their heart to you. God, they just walked. They, they, they just, man, they just walked. They just walked right in, and God, uh, God, you've got a plan. This is the awesome part. There's a game plan for their life, Lord. They're, they're going to be called right now to go up against some enemies and some battles that they, that they might be afraid of, but God, right now, even show them that they are called to be more than conquerors, that greater is he that is in them. They're just getting this right now, God. They're going to get all this. Wow. So God, help them. Help us to disciple them. Help us to lead them. Help us to, help us to find out where they are. Go with them. Because they know where there's some other folks that need you. God, give us that desire. Lord, help us to go back to Bethsaida and help people out of the fire. Lord, this is our prayer today. We love you. We praise you for what you did here. You are an awesome, awesome God. In your precious name we pray. So be it.